Hey fun fans, Tyler here. For this awesome FRC deep dive, we're going to have an exclusive YouTube giveaway for a 254 t-shirt during the rest of August. All you have to do is be a YouTube subscriber and leave a comment on the video of your favorite 254 robot. You can enter once for each of the 254 deep dive videos, so make sure you comment below. With that said, we're going to get into some of our questions uh, from our live chat here, and these we didn't really curate too much, so we'll try to uh, get through these as much as we can uh, through here. So, and then we'll do the last drawing uh, right after that. So, uh, so we had a question from X I E R R R. Have you guys considered uh, moving over to Onshape, and what do you use currently right now for your 3D solid modeling? Yeah, I'll speak to that. I've been a little bit involved in evaluating um, Onshape as a CAD platform. Uh, one of you know our alumni worked at Onshape um, and and helped implement a lot of those early features. I do think Onshape is a solid CAD program. Um, the the type of design that we do on 254 does not lend itself that well to Onshape. My biggest complaint was on importing um, various part geometries, like you know screws and or even more complicated things like from McMaster. We CAD in extreme detail. You can see that in the renders. We model in nearly every screw, every spring, gas spring, you know, what what I have it. So for us to use Onshape felt a lot slower in that workflow than SolidWorks. And so for that reason, right now we're using SolidWorks 2018 with the GrabCAD Workbench um, app to manage the files. Do you guys mind talking just a little bit more uh, in regards to, I mean, obviously your CAD is very intricate, right? So how do you, uh, how do you first off train students for CADs or is there a certain thing that you do that you find has a lot of success to it? Uh, and then secondly, how does your mentor and student relationship work in regards to who designs a robot and that sort of thing? Yeah, so I would say that there's two steps to learning how to CAD. Um, the first one is probably to learn how to design. And that's something that you don't need to have any software to be able to do. That comes down to fundamentals of, you know, in this case, mechanical engineering, things like, uh, you know, strength, the stiffness of a, of a beam is stronger oriented, um, you know, about the moment access, you know, th things like that are things that we hope our students um, develop through the hands-on experiences that we give them in the fall, be it in VEX or FRC. And then once you have a, a you know, solid design fundamentals, you can expand that into learning the software. So our CAD training begins with students doing the built-in SolidWorks tutorials. They're solid and easy to use to learn where all the buttons are. Then we get students um, doing some of our FRC specific tutorials. So we have some posted on our website, team254.com, with things like designing a gearbox uh, for a two-sim, two-speed dog shifter gearbox plate. Um, and then designing a custom hex shaft, you know, things that teach you parts that we would commonly make during the season. And then um, thirdly, we have our students follow up uh, by learning from other great resources around the web. So we particularly like Team 973, uh, Adam Hurd's ramp videos sure. and talking about West Coast Drive elevators, how to design those. There's some other great tutorials out there that people have posted about. And then when it comes to the mentor student relationship, we try to be um, as one on one as possible. So we, we have a privilege with a lot of mentors. And so that means that usually we can pair up a mentor and a student per subsystem. How many so, students do you have uh, in regards well, to CAD on CAD in particular? In regards to CAD, I'd say that there's probably, um, you know, 20 who say they know CAD. And mm -hmm. then of that, there's probably 10 that could probably design, you know, things uh, that would end up really making it on the robot. And then of that, there's probably a quite fewer number, you know, three or four or five that um, could really operate fully on their own and, and handle a subsystem. So for example, our Stinger climber, the first climber that we had that was a tube with a roller at the bottom that would come down with the elevator, pushing the robot up in the back and then driving onto the platform. That whole subsystem was basically done by one of our juniors um, with wow. very little mentor supervision. So, you know, just he figured out the Teflon blocks and did all the detail work there. He built a first mock-up and then we helped him a little bit, you know, when it came to the, the final little stages of the anodizing and the powder coating tolerancing. But besides that, it, it was uh, one of our best, you know, solid student soloed uh, subsystems. Sure. Uh, Clairvoy, um, Llama, something like that. I asked, uh, why does 254 do VEX and not FTC? 
Yeah, there's some history to that. Um, we, you know, Vex was the, came out first the season before FTC, and we had um, a student, uh, John Mueller, and some other mentors that were um, interested in bringing up that program. So they established uh, that Vex, and we kind of bought in to that system and that architecture early on. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, I have less experience with F FTC, but I think that it's a lot easier to have a VEX team that runs more autonomously with, with less mentor input. And that's kind of what our VEX program is. So, you know, the students that want to have interfaces with the mentors um, usually would go to the FRC program. And then those that want to kind of be their own captain and have a lot less uh, supervision and support, I mean, not, not supervision, but really mentorship, those students gravitate more towards the VEX program. So I think that the the differences between them works well for our team. So I'm going to ask you a pretty straightforward question here. You guys are a Hall of Fame team. Uh, first recently changed the chairman's specifications to essentially exclude programs like VEX uh, for chairman's contention. What are your guys' thoughts on that uh, in regards to that? They essentially say if you want to count STEM programs, it's got to be FTC and not VEX or not like some other program like that. Um. So... I, uh, that's not something that I heard about, but um, my, my first impression would be like um, there, it, it seems like uh, even like a, as a like, like as a STEM organization at our school, like we have a um, responsibility to like uh, give as many opportunities to like our students to um, participate in any robotics program, not just specifically first robotics programs. Mm -hmm. And the reason we have VEX is that um, we're able to have multiple VEX teams that are affiliated with 254 in our school rather than just one FTC team. So um, that allows us to reach much more students and give them much more autonomy and much more opportunities to participate and build whatever robot they want and kind of choose, have their own uh, autonomy in their team rather than just having one FTC team. So that's kind of like, um, I feel like it, it, it should still be like counted as like making robotics in general loud rather than just making first lead. Yeah. And when it comes to chairmans, um, our team, a lot of people don't know this, but although we're a hall of fame team, we still submit for the chairman's award at sure. our local regional every single year. Um, it's a great learning experience for our students. So regardless of whether or not we're ever going to win it, we're gonna keep submitting. And we think it's um, excellent, uh, you know, writing and presentation skill development for our students. So we do a lot of VEX. Not only do we have VEX teams, we also host a VEX tournament in November that has over 70 VEX teams. It's been hailed as one of the best um, VEX tournaments in Northern California. And we also have done outreach events that use the VEX kit, um, engineering days for elementary school students to come and build uh, in an afternoon. So. We like the VEX program. Um, I understand first reasons for uh, not wanting to promote that in terms of their their chairman's application process, but I think we're going to keep doing it. Fair enough on there. Uh, so more questions to ask. Uh, so we have a uh, uh, man. I'm going to say Connor Corey because we have a, we have a we have a McBride in our fun host as well too. So I'm going to keep messing this up. Uh, Connor McBride uh, asked, uh, "Do you do field relative positioning through nonlinear state estimation?" And for a layman like me, what the hell does that even mean? Yes, we do. Um, it's on line 66 and 67 of Robot State Estimator on our code release. Go ahead and look yeah. it up. I just did, and basically it's a bunch of fancy words that's a. Uh, uh, become kind of a jo running joke by Adam Hurd on Chief Delphi, and um, it's it's basically fancy talk for odometry. So, <laughs> all right, I'll pretend to know what that means as well too. So, uh, so in in regards to uh, Mike Stark, one of our hosts also asks uh, if they don't want a T-shirt tonight, uh, is there any other place they can buy a T-shirt? Um, Absolutely. We have our Chessy Champs uh, event coming up in mid-September. And although we aren't doing shipping yet for this, we do have an online store that just went live today. Um, Nick yeah, I we'll published it about it on Chief Delphi. We'll post about it on our Facebook page. This is a great way if you have been you know, desperately trying to get a shirt and you're interested in coming out to Chessy Champs, you can pre-order it. We have an exclusive um, white on black 
uh, deep space version of our 2019 competition shirt, in addition to a hoodie that you can pre-order um, and pick up at the Chessy Champs event. We're also actively working on setting up an online store. We get so many requests for modern team shirts. We have a store. It hasn't been updated, um, but we're trying to set something up with, this, with our school so that we can um, sell the shirts, uh, not really making a profit, but just get them out there so teams can buy them um, and get their hands because it's something that we hear all the time. All right. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and we'll, I think we'll kind of plug that one last time. I know uh, Connor posted the link uh, in chat for you guys' store as well, too, but the uh, uh, the 254 gear, I think, is located on a different site, so we'll try to get that up there uh, as well. Uh, a couple more questions to go through, and don't forget we have that last giveaway uh, in just a little bit. Um, FRC Nemer, uh, I'm sure this is a uh, great way to start off if the question is sincere or not is with that name, but uh, wants to know uh, what's the relationship between the strategy and the drive coach? How do they communicate? Who tells what to do? How does the strategy team inform the drive coach? That sort of thing. Yeah, so um, we have our, our strategy mentor and student team. Uh, they basically uh, collect all the drive teams in that alliance and they have a whiteboard and they go over the strategy so that everyone on the alliance is on the same page. And then specifically our drive coach um is mainly responsible for like execute like making sure that uh everyone in our alliance and our, our team uh executes that strategy during match and then um after the match what happens is um we record uh every single match at um all of our tournaments uh we set up a, a video camera in the stands and uh we have someone run that down to our drive team and uh, we had the strategy team and drive team watch it over, see um, what they could have done better and improve that for future matches. A uh, question in regards to from, uh, uh, man, screen names are interesting. Vash, Ligosh, Kladnit, something like that. Uh, could you talk about your driver station and what controls you use? Uh, yeah, so um, our driver station is uh, custom built and we use uh, joysticks that we bought. I'm not sure exactly what model they are. Um, and then we've uh, taken off the casings for them and uh, made customs casings for them so that uh, they feel a little better for our drivers. And then we use the Xbox controller for our operator controls. And uh, basically, uh, we um, our our drive is um, called a cheesy drive. Um, it's kind of like arcade drive, except in, instead of um, the turn stick controlling the angular rate, it controls the curvature that our robot's driving. And then. Um, our operator controls, basically the operator controls um, are all presets so that uh, I, and there's uh, some uh, joysticks for jogging a little bit, but we prefer that they don't jog because um, especially with this robot, because uh, it's very easy to break things. Um, so we do have software to prevent that, but we had uh, issues in our uh, SVR where we lost our encoder position on our turret and um, our operator tried to jog. And if he went too far, then we would have lost like all of our wiring so um we try to keep jogging to the minimum so again most of our operator controls are just to uh, set presets and if you watch our behind the bumpers video we go through all the presets and we go through assistance check that we normally do before matches and then one more thing i will mention real quick is that we have two screens um on our drive uh, driver station uh the left one's for the driver and that's um our fpv camera which is at the top of our robot and then um the right one is for our operator and it's uh our bottom limelight feed so that uh they can tell uh if we're seeing the vision target or not very very cool uh a few more questions as we start to wrap up here atlas space uh, uh asked uh for example uh how did you know that you want to do a turd this year so that's about the approach to your design uh, what made you, you talked about this a little bit before, how there were a few different kind of uh, main architectures out there, right? Uh, what made you choose a turret this year? I, okay. Um, in our initial prototyping, we realized how like precise the disc placement has to be, like how little leeway you have in having an offset in, like linearly or in terms of yaw and pitch and roll. Um, so the turret was created as an extra degree of freedom. I mean, the only two ways to achieve in that, as many degrees of freedom as we wanted um, was 
either a turret or a swerve. Mm-hmm. And we picked the turret just because um, we were familiar with, we wanted to keep the West Coast drive going. And um, a- another reason why we picked the turret is was because we didn't have our end effector completely figured out. Um, in fact, even when we bagged the robot. So um, I think having that turret was a confidence booster in what in some way because like no matter what your end effector was you could just you have enough degrees of freedom to make it work yeah it makes a lot of sense on there uh by the way chat we'll just let you know uh we have a few more questions left we're not going to be accepting any more during the live show so we can wrap up soon and since we're already over time uh but thank you everybody who did submit questions uh uh, guys, I'll just ask you real quick. If people have more questions that they want answered, is uh, Chief Delphi a good place? Uh, where would be a good good area yeah. for them to ask questions for you guys? Yeah, Ch- Chief Delphi is probably the best. All right. And we'll try to uh, – if you did post them in our Discord as well too, uh, either post those in the Chief or we'll try to get them over to 254 if you still want that question asked uh, either way. Uh, so a couple of last ones to ask. Uh, uh, Estelle 624 uh, wants to know more about your uh, uh, suction climber for worlds, the switch to a suction climb. How was the decision made and did you face any challenges in executing that? Yeah, the, the suction climb was quite tricky. Um, initially, we didn't really put too much uh, design effort into it because um, we have a, a saying on our team, uh, steal from the best and <laughs> um, invent the rest. And so if you can... Uh, wait until somebody else makes a suction climber, learn exactly what type of foam and pump and square area you need and how it would interact with the textured HDPE surface of the platform. Those were all huge um, ifs and and parameters that we didn't really want to investigate designing around. So we ended up going with the Stinger design that we knew we could accomplish by bag um, and just punting on the suction climber until later. It ended up not being... Um, as hard as we initially thought. Once we saw the number of teams that were able to do it with such simple mechanisms, we knew that it was a necessity for us to pull it out by the world championship. And so we really only started working um, hard on the suction climber after SVR. So that was Mm. a two week design sprint to design the entire linkage mechanism, the foam, the pad, the arm and the pump and get it all coordinated and swapped out in place of the uh the old stinger design so you said steal from the best by the way uh which team did you steal the best from um we borrowed uh some learnings from our new mentor adam hurd uh you know formerly uh mentor for 973 he was bouncing back and forth to both teams that season Mm -hmm. um and he you know he'd done some investigating with some other teams around central california um i think really when we saw uh 1619s uh, reveal video and the efficiency of their climb, we knew that, you know, the game was on and that everyone needed these suction climbs and triple climbs to succeed at, at Worlds. All right. Uh, a couple last questions. Uh, you guys have two limelights on your robot. And you talked about that in regards to how you had your uh, your displays up. Uh, so what do you guys like most about the limelight? Do you think overall the performance justifies the investment? And that was asked by uh, uh, Orkadar01. Yeah, um, so... I, I definitely think that it's worth a, a investment. Um, our alternative would have been to uh, going back to our um, uh, Android app, which we used in 2016 and 2017, but that requires a lot of um, tuning to change it for, uh, it has to be individ- individually tuned per game. Um, and uh, the limelight was just like, um, as it says on the website, you just plug it in and it works. And um, it's really easy, to, really intuitive to use. So um it was definitely um, really helpful, and we got some of our younger um, uh, programming members to uh, get involved with Vision by working with the Limelight, and that was really easy to use. There are a couple of drawbacks. Um, mainly, it was our fault for using uh, or streaming two um, Limelight streams along with that third FBF um, stream, but um, on uh, many of our Houston fields, we had a lot of problem with going over um, data, especially on... Um, going over the uh, bandwidth limit, especially on Einstein. So we had to like drastically reduce uh, resolution on that. And then the other drawback um, I had was um, the limelight requires a radio connection and all the, basically an entire control system uh, for you to uh, be able to uh, 
tune uh, all the vision constants. So um, it's not very easy to bring it out during field calibration and uh, retune the pipeline. So um, actually on uh, the Minute Maid Park, um, the lighting was really weird because we got weird sun angles and stuff like that. Um, so we had to bring our entire robot out to the field and tune it that way. We've got some fantastic teams all around the Bay and even elsewhere um, that come and use our field. And we'll, you know, one, when they're here, we'll provide some technical assistance and, you know, quick mentorship with them. Um, you know, I have to pick, call out, you know, my favorite local uh, Bay Area team has got to be um, 971. Specifically, I work with a lot of their mentors at uh, a surgical robotics company in Redwood City called Oris Health. Um, it's, you know, in fact, uh, quite a few of the, uh, what I would say, top mentors in FRC are all now working there. Uh, Travis Covington, Mason Marquis, formerly 118, mm -hmm. and Adam Hurd, formerly 973. So the, uh, the company is really great. You know, if you, just as a plug, if, if you're uh, a college uh, student looking for a summer internship or a co-op or you're looking for full-time work, um, you can go to Oris Health, that's A-U-R-I-S and uh, check it out. The company is actively hiring all types of engineers and business operations Excellent. roles. And we'll send Oris Health that bill in the mail for that plug. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> uh, by the way, I was muted when I asked that question. Uh, so uh, just to repeat that question so people know it's, uh, what, shout out some other teams in the Bay Area. Who do you like to work with? And uh, Atlas Space asked that question just to make sure we give credit where that's due. All right, we are going to do our last giveaway, our last drawing here once again for the awesome uh, t-shirt from 254 uh, and the it was full send right but how do we spell that again f-u-l-l-5-3 space 5-3 n-d right yeah that's like late speak full send full send all right so that was the keyword uh the win on that and the winner for that is going to be uh stell 2431 congratulations <laughs> Uh, still, I feel like, do you know this person? Cause this person was, uh, razzing, I think Dan and chat a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> so I have no idea who it is, but, oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but All they, right. yeah, their name is. Yeah. Well, congratulations to Stell uh, on there. Once again, thanks again to 254 uh, for the awesome giveaways. Guys, before we finish up, uh, anything uh, we talked about, uh, Chessie Champs and some uh, shirts available. Uh, so can you bring that up one more time with the uh, Chessie Champs coming up? Uh, where can people find more about it? Uh, where can they purchase the shirts? That sort of thing. Yeah, so um, definitely keep up on uh, Chief Delphi. We have a Chessy Champs thread, and uh, there's another thread dedicated to shirt sales that I put earlier in the chat. And um, yeah, if, if you're interested, uh, the event's going to be uh, in September, I believe, 27th to 29th. And definitely check it out. It's going to be streaming on uh, Twitch and uh, Blue Lines Game Day. And then also uh, some other things is, uh, again, on Saturday, we released all of our technical resources, so code release and technical binder. And those are also on Chief Delphi, so go ahead and check that out. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. if you if you uh, if anyone has any questions specifically on the mechanical, electrical, or software side, I encourage you to ask those in those Chief Delphi threads. Um, that's where we have the best response and uh, ability to answer those questions. Uh, so a couple of last things to uh, bring up here. Uh, we are going to have a third T-shirt giveaway, uh, thanks to 254, and that's actually going to be on YouTube. Uh, so keep an eye out for that when we upload this to YouTube. Uh, there'll be some instructions on there. We'll also post it on our Discord, and that'll be your chance to win a 254 shirt. So if you're not either watching live or if you're watching live and you get a chance, you got a third opportunity. And thanks again to 254 uh, for doing the giveaways. And, guys, thanks so much for coming on uh, today to talk about more about your team and some of the inner workings, open up the doors a bit. Uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, that as well. Uh, so a couple things to go through on here. We do want to give uh, some shout outs to those who helped support the stream uh, as we went through. And guys, we had a lot of them. So we'll, I'll take one really, really, really deep breath and kind of go that way. But uh, Waco Taco 6 with the prime sub Josie Bell with the prime sub uh, PJ the Ref, 21 months support. Thanks, buddy. CDF Man, 15 months support. Thanks a lot. Massless Photon with the prime sub. Uh, Trout Master Gaming, four months of support. Com Master 1018 with eight months. Dave Powell's with the prime sub. Shano 45, 11 months of support. Sean Vanessa, uh, 19 months of support. Cookie Hero, 289, seven months of support. Says, dang, uh, seven months. This feels way shorter. It always goes by fast. Uh, Blue 2 Gaming with the prime sub. Uh, Five Pi Five with the Prime Sub, Ardonio, 30 months of support. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. Samp 326 with a tier one sub. Will 4944, 13 months of support. Uh, and and 2364 with the tier one sub. Rooster 2655, 10 months of support. Uh, Hilly G with a tier one sub. Fog Machine with a three months of support. 
Crazy Potato with the Tier 1 sub. Uh, Zex Genny with the Tier 1 sub. Super 4399 Tier 1. Uh, Addict YG with the Tier 1 sub. Ola Zilla with a few bits. Uh, Xtomi Games 123, somebody. Thank you, XWO Tier 1 sub. Matt 1511, 28 months support. Welcome back, Matt. Uh, Minimum Shoe 8 with the Tier 1 sub. Ola Zilla with 20 months support. Dare with nine months in a row. Thanks a lot. And Ola Zilla wrapping up there with 500 bits. Thank you so much, everybody, for helping keep uh, fun, a lot of live and independent. And apparently, uh, Dan. They really want you to dab on screen. Well, will you, will you give us a dab? There we go. That, that works for me. So I don't know what a dab is. I'm old. So, uh, guys, a couple last things to bring up. Uh, next week, uh, we have an awesome uh, roundtable, uh, Roast and Robots, where we're going to have Katie Whiting from 253, Carl Campos from 1678, and Brandon Bibbick from 4476 to talk all about scouting. If you saw that thread in Cheap Delphi, it's going to be a lot about that, uh, scouting and alliance selections, that sort of thing, next week, Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, as well, if you're into FTC or want to learn more about the new rev parts coming up, uh, tomorrow we have FTC Live at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have Greg Nadell, president of Rev Robotics, on to talk about some of the new products of what some of those will probably be in frc as well and lots of giveaways as well too so thank you everybody uh for all the support uh thank you to 254 for coming on can't wait to do more that's going to be it for frc deep dive uh, of course if you have any suggestions what you want to see next make sure you check out our discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and thank you everybody for watching and have a great night see you next time on fun talk to you then good night everybody Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.